G'day everyone, uh, Kevin again from Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, today we're going to have a quick look at the linkage arrangement I just put on the um, on the throttle bodies down here. I'll just um, quickly whip the camera around and show you. What I'm so, what I've had to do here is I bought one of these um, stainless linkage kits from um, from Aeroflow. The kit is out of their catalogue. Um, there you can see the stainless steel carburetor linkage arms. Um, that's the list of what they have available and the prices they are. Pretty cheap really. Under 30 bucks for a linkage. Anywhere from, what does it say there? Anywhere from uh, 95 millimetres from 70 to 95 millimeter up to 320 to 345 millimeter in length. So I think mine was a 170. Um, I'll show you what I did with it here. So what happens is these throttle bodies from Speedmaster, let's zoom out a little bit. These throttle bodies from Speedmaster, they have these um, throttle wheels on the end of them here. Um, these wheels have a um, like a three and a half millimeter hole um, spacing or holes in them like evenly spaced around it on both on both sides but the linkage arms you get the the linkage ball nut i think that's what you call it i'll show you what i'm talking about here if i just pop that off that linkage ball nut there um it's quarter inch um, i think quarter inch is probably what's that four 4.6, 4.8 mil, 4.8 millimetres, something like that. Um, so I had to drill out the hole at the right spacing. So you can see I've drilled one at the top over here, one at the bottom here. Got the linkage to fit, um, in case you're wondering how that goes on. So this little, how can I get that in the picture there? That little um, hole there slides over the ball and this little spring sleeve here slides up over the top of it and locks it in. So you can see it's got like a couple of little, couple of little, um, cutouts in that spring so that slides up around the neck of the ball so um, when you adjust these you put one side on like I've done here it's fixed and then the other side you adjust it so this ball just slides straight into that hole there you can see there's no pressure on it it's straight in there you spin this around slide that little spring clip over it and then it's snug in there it's quite tight in there you can adjust the arm if you need to to um, to lock it in. Um, so what that what that achieves for me there is these throttle bodies facing opposite directions. The the throttle wheels have to go opposite directions too. So you can see when I when I will eventually hook up a throttle cable to it. When I turn this throttle wheel here, it spins the other one equal equally. And I've got to sort out these cables yet. They're a bit of a mess. And I've got the injection rails off it so you can see what happens here so as i move this linkage here you can see all of them move exactly the same time you know i just move in part throttle they all move evenly which is exactly what i need to do because you've got to calibrate each throttle body you've got to calibrate um this pair then this pair then this pair then this pair and you've got to do them individually and make sure they're all tuned correctly so they are a velocity stack um, so to achieve the correct velocity in each stack, I then have to buy one of these, I don't actually know what they're called, it's like a, a flow meter, what does it sound, a packet here, it says it's a um, deluxe carburetor airflow meter, so that's the um, airflow meter there, that has to go into each of these throttle bodies. Um, You've got to put them inside. I think it's a 50 millimeter ball, and this is a, up to a 50 millimeter rubber grommet on the end of it. You put it in each throttle body, and you tune them just like you're tuning a set of um, downdraft or side draft webbers. The the vacuum, or the suction of the engine pulling the um, air into each each cylinder will move this meter from the zero mark around to whatever it is, and I've got to watch it evenly. Evenly tune each one. I've got to go each one. Um, means I've got to move all these cables out of the way. 
I'd like to move each one of these evenly. Um, and I was just noticing before that when I turn this, when I turn this um, linkage here to open full throttle, which is, I mean, I'll just turn the light on so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. If I want to pull this linkage, I get full throttle, which is 90 degrees to the actual ball of the throttle body. Um, it actually just clips the edge of the end of this end of this bung on here, so I've got to get a bigger bung so it doesn't actually go in so deep. So if I've got that in there and it's in deep, um, when I turn the throttle body, it actually hits the hits the airflow meter and, and moves it around. So. Um, well, there you go. The name is actually written on it. It's, I don't know if you can read it there, it says it's a synchrometer. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Anyway, so yeah, I've got a, I'm getting a bit closer. I got some new fuel rails from Aeroflow. They're over there on the bench. Um, they come with a few scratches on them. I'm sending them back to the supplier because um, everything on this engine is going to be painted or polished. And I bought them because they're polished. Um, they're scratched. It looks like someone's had them out of a packet before I got them sent to me. Um, so I'm sending them back. I, don't, I could repolish them, but I really shouldn't have to. I'll repolish all these trumpets and everything too. They're starting to get a little bit tarnished from just sitting around. Obviously, I keep plastic bags over them, but um, yeah, so we're gradually getting there. Um, I've bought some extensions for the end of the um, fuel injectors. These, are, these LS1 fuel injectors are quite long. You can see how long that is. Probably, I don't know, 75 mil sticks out the end of the end of the um, tube there. Um, so I bought a small extension to raise this up a bit higher because with those previous set of um, fuel rails I had on, they're the ones I got from Speedmaster with the kit. When I actually put them on, um, how do they go this way? When I put them on there, actually hit all the plugs so I can get the fuel rails to mount just like when I go to get the um, the new ones mounted so these will fit in there but then the plugs can't spin around they kind of get in the way so um, what I'm trying to achieve with that is um, extend these up 25 millimeters or or an inch if you like um, they should be up out of the way I should be able to turn all the all these injector plugs I should be able to spin them all down I've got to extend the harness. I bought some harness extensions for it as well, but I should be able to turn all these down this way out of the way so you don't see them um, and hide all this cabling. So another little job I've got to do, but um, they're starting to stack up. The other thing I have to do as well is I, um, I have this little sketchy arrangement here. It's got my um, map sensor in it on this side. This is all sort of polished alloy blocks underneath. That's why I taped it up. Um, I couldn't get a polished alloy one for the um, the AIC, um, the air intake controller. So I had to buy this black one because I couldn't get a polished one. I've also, like I mentioned before, I've got a block getting made up that takes the vacuum ports, takes the map sensor, takes the AIC um, air intake controller, the AIC. Um, and also it needs to have this little breather on top of it. So I've just done this temporarily. So when I get the fuel rail issue sorted out, I'll be able to attempt to start it. So the AIC will normally go under this block here. You can see where, it, um, where it'll mount in the bottom here. That's the, the port for it and the two bolt holes. Um, I'll bolt that up into there, tighten them all up. I'll just put some Teflon on them for now, just to keep them all in the correct arrangement. And then when I make my original or make my block, my um, sensor block, vacuum block, I'll mount it on there, tidy this all up, shorten the hoses, mount this over the back somewhere over here. I'll, um, I'll buy some smaller, I'll buy a fitting that goes from this dash eight straight down to dash six, and I'll be able to put that, that small breather directly onto the top of it down here, so it should sit nice and low. Um, the reason that breather's there is when the air intake sensor opens that port, it lets air suck in that hole. So I think I might have actually crossed over. I think I might have to suck in that hole, but then I've got to swap this around. But you get what I'm talking about. The air intake 
controller opens up, let some air in to adjust your um, your air fuel mixture on the on the engine. Um, yeah, so I'll get that sorted as well, and then I'll um, to tidy up all these wiring, all this wiring and stuff, and keep progressing from there. So yeah, that's another quick video for you. Um, Ten minute one. Again, a couple of little interesting things that um, most people don't get to see, especially setting up these throttle bodies. Um, like I mentioned, they're a cheap set. I'm just trying to make it work. I'll either get it working and working well, or I'll get it working and it'll be a complete dog and I'll have to get it um, dyno tuned, or I'll fail dismally and um, have to buy a more expensive set because I really like I really like the old um, throttle body look. The trumpets, uh, take another look at it there, get a bit of trumpet envy in here. And um, that's it for today. If you want to hit the like button, like what I, like what I do, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share it around with any of your mates that you may think will be interested in it. Okay, till next time. See you later.